We have just landed on Duna and we are sliding. Still sliding. And we are still sliding. Uh, hopefully this doesn't end badly. Oh, hey, we're slowing down. Look at that. This is Echo 3 and welcome back to our modded career mode discussion. I'm going to pick up a couple technologies here. Some better antenna, some better probe core, and uh, some five meter parts with the bigger fairing. Hopefully this will enable us to go on some further places with some bigger missions. Let's pick up a few contracts here. All of these are for Duna. We're gonna do some science and plan a flag. And we have one contract to fly by Gilly. All of that's very easy. So we're gonna throw together a pretty simple craft for this. This is a modded capsule that can hold four Kerbals. That'll be great so I can get some experience points for some Kerbals that haven't been as many places yet. Throw on some of these bigger solar panels. Duna doesn't get quite as much sun as Kerbin, although this is a bit overkill even for Duna. Some landing legs so we will be safe. And throw on some ladders. We don't really need ladders for Duna. The jetpacks work okay. I just, I like to have them to be on the safe side, like if I ran out of EVA propellant or something like that. Let's throw this all in a big fairing and we will throw it on a large rocket. Now I'm gonna, right now I'm uh, throwing on some of these EVA experiment kits. This is from the Breaking Ground DLC. And so I'm gonna put down some of those experiments and get a little bit more science. We'll have a second stage here. This will kind of be the stage to eject us from Kerbin and get us into orbit around Duna and start the deorbit burn. The upper stage there is for our return back to Kerbin. And now we need a booster stage to throw all this up into space and get us almost into orbit. So I'm shooting for something around 3000 meters per second of Delta V. You can see I'm using the Kerbal Engineer readout, the mod there, which is giving all those numbers. Although with the stock game, uh, those numbers are available on the right hand side. Kerbal Engineer is just able to do a lot more and I prefer it. Uh, that's why you'll see me use it. I am trying out some of these new spacesuits, given different Kerbals, different suits. Let's launch. All right. Hey, this is going pretty well. I, I've got some of these modded engines. I think they're from one of the near future engine packs. I'm, I'm not positive, but pretty sure they are. They've got a lot of power, but the rocket itself isn't as stable as I would have thought. I thought those fins on the back would have done more for me. They don't seem to. So if I use this particular engine in the future, I probably need to add a few fins. And the booster stage did what it was supposed to, got us almost into orbit, and then the upper stage finished us off. Now I'm gonna use the in-game tool here to create my maneuver node to Duna and time warp there, and the game automatically stopped the time warp when I got close. Um, and this maneuver gets us an encounter with Duna. It's not great, so I'll set up a mid-course correction burn and try to get a better encounter. What I want to do, because I need to fly by Gilly, is have one of these passes uh, as I orbit Duna come close to Gilly. I, I just need to go through its sphere of influence. Nothing crazy. I don't have to even get to low space. High space is fine. So I'm going to play with my maneuver nodes and see if I can get an encounter with Gilly. Uh, this week I actually went on vacation and had a pretty good time for four days there. Um, actually got to do horseback riding and um, even went in a cave. So that was that was really a uh, really fun time there. Um, got to go with some friends and really enjoyed that. Did some tent camping. So that was a nice break, uh, change of pace, but four days gone meant I <laughs> really um, didn't have as much time to put into this as I would have liked. That's why I'm only gonna be doing the one mission here with our flyby complete. We are gonna be able to then land on Duna. So I'm gonna bring my apoapsis down 
and trying to figure out exactly where I want to land. We already have a rover on Duna, so it's got a mystery goo experiment on it. So I just need to land somewhat close to the rover. I'll transfer my Kerbals over to it. So I want the I want to land in the daylight side. So that's why I'm doing this, and I'm trying to land reasonably close to the rover. What you're seeing me doing right now is setting up my landing. The lines you're seeing are from the mod trajectories, which gives a better prediction of where you're going to land. It is able to account for the atmosphere as well as the planet's rotation. So a very useful mod, although it is a bit processor heavy, so I don't run it all the time. I will turn it off and not have it do all those calculations on my version of the game you can see it it's there on the bottom right hand side that's the trajectories button there and when I don't need it I just turned off our landing looks pretty good I'm gonna overshoot the landing site uh, that's all right I'll use the engine here to slow down a little bit I got a parachute I was kind of counting on that that I needed to overshoot a little bit to account for the extra drag of the parachute but we're pretty good and you saw at the video the beginning of the video where I, I slid a little bit well, I, I cut all um, some of this stuff out, but I had to drive the rover over here. Not a big deal. I got a rover. It, it wasn't too far. It was about 20 kilometers away. So not, not a huge deal, but doable. Transfer the Kerbals over. And we've already been, this is the Midlands. We've already been to the Midlands. I can get a little bit more science out of the Mystery Goo and the Science Junior. Now, I need to go to three different biomes. Now, I'm gonna pull up the ScanSat mod. I've already scanned Duna, and I've done a biome map with ScanSat. So, I'm gonna highlight the different biomes that I need to go to and create waypoints to go there. Then I use the mod here, Bon Voyage, to just drive the rovers there for me. I just switch away and the rovers will go there while I'm in time warp. Um, so I just jumped over to one of my orbiting satellites and it would jump out of warp whenever it got to the location. And so I switch back to the rover, do the science that I need to do, specifically the mystery goo, but I went ahead and collected all the science because these are biomes I haven't been to before which is great, we're gonna get all kinds of science, like something like 3,000 some odd science out of this mission. Um, so again, I jump over to my ScanSat mod, find the biome I need to go to, create a waypoint, then I use the mod um, Bon Voyage, and select the waypoint, and say travel there. Then I just let Time Warp do its thing, and boom, I'm over there. And driving a rover can be tedious and you can have lots of mistakes and destroy your rover if you're not careful. The Bon Voyage mod, the bon Voyage mod really just simplified all of that for me, made it much easier for me to travel to places. Um, I wouldn't even consider accepting a contract like this if it wasn't for this particular mod because I'm, I'm driving all over Duna. And if I really wanted, I just drive to all of the biomes and get all the science from Duna. It, uh, boy, I, I spent maybe an hour doing all of this driving around where if I had to actually drive this, I mean, I would have been talking, um, you know, half a day trying to drive to all these different biomes. The ScanSat mod also had anomalies on the surface highlighted by these question marks. So again, I created a waypoint, had my rover drive there, and let's check out this anomaly. And it's, the anomaly is not actually these weird floating rocks you see above Duna. No, there is something here up on this hillside that's dark. So I'm gonna drive the rest of the way. Uh, sometimes the, if you are too close to something, the Bon Voyage mod will actually spawn you inside the object and you'll blow up. So. I will create the waypoint just a little bit further away and, and drive the rest of it myself so as not to risk destroying things. And it is one of these monoliths. They are, uh, some of these are randomly generated around the uh, map and I happen to find one here. So that's kind of cool. 
Um, we get to check it out. There's nothing uh, too special for us for finding this. Uh, and there's also the one monolith near the Space Center, which most people have probably seen, but you can find these on other planets and moons as well around the game. Uh, I, I can't tell you where you're going to find them, but let's, let's get our picture taken by this monolith. Thank you, Squad, for this wonderful game that you've created that has <laughs> really stood the test of time. Uh, not many games last this long and have this much of a following. Uh, just a wonderful game. I know I have enjoyed it for years. It just, it's fun. <laughs> you know, it really uh, brings out creativity, um, thinking through problems, solving them, and do what you want. It's, it's just a fun game, and the mods obviously make it that much better. Uh, just things I wouldn't even have considered doing because it's too boring, too tedious. Uh, these mods let me do it and, you know, just drive around all of Duna with a few Kerbals here. Let's uh, go ahead and bring these guys over. The mission is basically completed here. We've, um, all of our contracts will be fulfilled on our return. But I did bring some science experiments. So uh, they're in the capsule. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw them down on the ground. And then I'm gonna use my Kerbal to actually place them. My engineer has leveled up to level four. So, He's going to be able to uh, put the solar panels down and they will generate more power uh, if, if he was just uh, like a um, one star Kerbal, you know, if he hadn't leveled up at all, the solar panel would only be able to produce one unit of power. Now it can produce four. So all of those things are properly powered and I've got an antenna and a control unit there and a weather thing. So. Every so often you will see something pop up on the screen that the weather unit is sending some science home. I have relay satellites around Duna, so even if I don't have direct line of sight with Kerb in there, uh, my antenna will be able to uh, transmit the data home. Now I used the Kerbal alarm clock, not the in-game alarm clock, to set up this maneuver. I wasn't in a very equatorial orbit, and the in-game maneuver plot doesn't like these non-perfectly equatorial orbits, so I just used Kerbal Alarm Clock, set up the time myself, and then set up the uh, actual maneuver myself, so I had to make that. It really worked out great. I can get an encounter with Kerbin um, right off of my maneuver, and actually I can get an arrow breaking encounter right off of my maneuver if I if I so chose. And you can see them on trajectories here again as I'm planning some arrow breaking passes. Um, I, I probably would have been fine without arrow breaking. I just was wanting to get a little closer to the Space Center. So with a few air braking passes here, um, I can actually, it's more like I'm just waiting for the Space Center to be in a good spot for where my landing's going to be here. And now we actually look like we have a shot. So if I burn retrograde, we're gonna land on the right continent here. And that will pretty well wrap up this mission. We're gonna land close and recover all our science, get all of these um, funds from these missions, and honestly had a pretty fun time doing this. If you have any suggestions for future missions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. And I, I mean, I love to hear what you guys have to say. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, uh, please remember to do that. I, I post weekly, so if you wanna see future content like this, and if you like the video, Go ahead, leave a like down there. Let me know that um, you enjoy what I'm putting out. Let YouTube know that you enjoy what I'm putting out so others will see this content as well. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this modded career mode discussion. I will see you next time.